Uh, we're here to have a good time with you guys and let you know that our God is great Jehovah. Amen. Uh, come on, move with us a little bit. You're in control. He's seated high. He is Lord of all. The great I am. He's sovereign ruler. He's lion of Judah. You are God. Come on, clean. You are God. And you're in. And you're in control. Come on, he's seated high. Seated high. He's Lord of all. Things will change. Things will change. When we call. When we call. On that name. On that name. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Tell them again. Things will change. Will change. When we call. When we call. On that name. On that name. Oh, well, we're going to say it again. Things will. Things will change. When we call. When we call. On that name. On that name. Oh, yeah. He's great. Jehovah. One more time. Things. God of a breakthrough. Whatever you feel and need tonight, he is ready to do it.
in one through eight. Ah, we got it now. We got it now. All right. Good morning, Zoom. Good, good morning, Facebook. Good morning, St. Mary. And I'm still excited. Oh, look at that. All right. Oh, Mother Williams. Is a oh. Okay, uh, for all of y'all who can't, whew, for all of y'all who can't see, um, Mother Juanita Williams and Sister Priscilla Slater have just walked in the church this morning. And, uh, and, uh, and it, it, it's a good day. It, it, it's a good day. Now, I'm excited about the rest of y'all walking in church, too. Don't, 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 I, don't, I don't want anybody to get upset. I know Sister Green in church today. She present. Actually, I should say it this way. They've all been in church the entire time. Let's be real clear. They've been in church the entire time. They in the building today. They, we just want to make sure that part is clear. And uh, we are excited about those who are in the building but we're excited about those who are joining us from wherever they happen to be joining us. And I can't think of a better reason for us to stand together and sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Mr. Smith, if you would please come and lead us in our call to worship this morning. Oh, no. Actually, yeah, it should be up. I'm sorry. Yeah, you had, you had the slide. Yeah, put the slides back up there. Just the next slide so that we can... There we go. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For a day in thy courts is better, I'm sorry. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in your house. Lord, I have loved your habitation, the place where your honor dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing his praises. You may be seated. love you I love you I love you Lord today because you came for me in such a special way that's why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify your name. Turn your mic off, Pastor. 
That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, everybody. I love you. I love you. That's it. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care. Because you cared for me. In such a special way, in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Song says, uh, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You pay the price for me way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled up with praise I love you I love you I love you I love you Lord today because you care because you care for me in such a special way in such a special way that's why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart... That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, praise him. Scripture says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The, the mouth speaks. Uh, it gets better and better and better. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And my heart is filled with praise. We celebrate God today for all that he, he, he's about. The, oh, oh, okay. All right. Um, Sister Elizabeth Williams, will you please come and read the scripture before I start talking? Good morning. I will be reading from Revelations, the fifth chapter, first through the 14th verse. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the, I'm sorry, my eyes, on the throne, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Yes. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book? and the loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, 
Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth unto all the earth. And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and 20 elders fell down before the, the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors and which are the prayers of all saints. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and every tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne of the beast and the elders and the numbers of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. May God add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his most holy word. Amen. Uh, we are a little out of order. Uh, Sister Battles, if you would please come with the prayer this morning. I'm, I'm sorry, I got, I got excited. I, I, I got excited because I knew what she was going to read. I'm sorry. Good morning, church. Let us bow our heads. Father God. Good morning. Father, we've come here today to worship and praise your holy name. Father, we come to say Thank you for all your goodness and your mercy. Oh, Father, we just want to bless your name today as we look out amongst your people. Father, we thank you for your healing power. Father, we thank you for all those that have gathered here today to just to say thank you, Father. Oh, God, you've been so good to us. We may not be worthy, Father, but in your eyesight, we thank you. Father, we ask you to continue to bless the ministry that you have here. Oh, Father, continue to endow him and his family from on high. Teach him to lead us the way you would have us to go. God, <laughs> I can't thank you enough because you've been good to all of us. That's on the uh, sound of my voice. Oh God, we pray for those that are bereaved, those that are sick in their bodies. Father, we pray for Elder Cotton. Thank you for his healing. Thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name, Father. Oh God, you are so good. Father, 
we ask that you enter to this service because we just want to say thank you for your good. Father, I can't say that enough. You've been good, so good. You look beyond all our folks and you saw the need, Father. Oh, glory to your name. Father, I feel good today when I look out and see those that weren't able to walk, weren't able to move. But today, Father, they walking and they moving. Oh, faithful God, you are so faithful. Oh, God, you are so faithful. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Now, as we continue to the service, Father, we just welcome your Holy Spirit into the service. Fill this room with your glory. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These and many other blessings we ask in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, y'all don't know. When I look out and see you. Minister Bryant.
just just for a moment I want you to take a just a quick stroll down memory lane the first Sunday of April 2020 the beginning because we were sure we were going to be back in church by Easter you know we just be out for a little while and then we gonna get back and we gonna do what we gonna do first Sunday of April trying to figure out Linda and I drove around for like nine hours that Saturday delivering communion didn't know where we was going and had church that Sunday really trying to figure out how we gonna make this thing work somebody asked me last week um, I was talking to another preacher about you know everything that's happened over the last couple of years and of course we talked about COVID and we talked about all of that and I had to tell him Minister Bryant that you do, you, you do realize that even though we had some funerals, that we had some loss of life, we did not lose one person to COVID from this church. Now, I, I would love to say that's because we washed our hands and we wore our masks and we did everything, but little Reg told us why. Great is God's faithfulness. We, we've been to the hospital. We, we've had it's all kinds of issues. We, we've been to the rehab center. We, we, we've done some things, but through it all, God was faithful. God, God was faithful. We, we done fought cancer. We done fought bad backs. We, we done fought eyesight issues. We done fought all kinds of stuff. And through it all, his faithfulness has been great. We serve a good God. We, 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 we serve a good, good God. And I, I, I told you, um, you know, with Linda Cooks, and she says, how was it? I go, it was good. She's like, just good. She get all kinds of attitude because, you know, I didn't go over and above. But I'm like, if I can say God is good, then I can probably say your lasagna is good too. I, 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 think, it's, I think it's okay. But uh, I, I praise God this morning from the youngest to the oldest and to everyone in between that has joined us today in person and online. And um, it's an exciting day. Um, uh, Brother Lewis, if you want to go ahead and bring up the slides. Um, it's an exciting day for my family, actually, as well. My parents are not online this morning because my niece is being baptized today at my brother's church, and, and we are very excited about that. She made a profession of Jesus Christ a couple of weeks ago, and um, so we are very excited about that. And in this case, in this case only, will I let my mom go to my brother's service instead of ours, and this is it, so y'all let her know. Y'all let her know when you talk to her on the book club thing, they, they, they don't make this a habit. Um, so, um, so, um, oh my gosh, so exciting. Um, Y'all, hopefully, if you have not received the emails, please let me know, because um, I want to make sure that we're getting the information out, because August is going to be, well, it already is, a huge month. When we talk accelerate, when we talk about going wild, this is the month that this whole thing was built for. All right. And so I hope you everybody, get, get your get your stretch on. Ugh, we got work to do. We, we got things that are happening and we want to be ready for each and every bit of it. So next slide. Um, as far as the thank you goes, thank you to the young people for last week. Um, I, I want to thank God, quite frankly, because me getting caught in Dallas was a great opportunity for me to actually see service from online because I had not done that, of course. And uh, it, one thing it teaches me is, y'all, we, we got to use the mics. The mics make a difference. You, well, I don't need, no, no, you might, you don't need a mic. But the people on Zoom, they need a mic. <laughs> 
they need you to use the mic. And so we're we, we going we gonna to work on that and we're going to continue to improve what we do. Um, I want to thank uh, Brother Lewis for getting everything set up last week. And then also want to thank Lewis and Nicole and Pius, who are here today, for their work yesterday at the expungement event. Um, we co-sponsored that with um, Southern University and all that we did. And um, I think they had, they had planned for 80. I think they had, well, more than 80. <laughs> And unfortunately, they actually had to send some people away because just of the way that it worked. And so um, we're praying for another opportunity to get to be able to do that again, to make a difference in people's lives. And so I definitely want to thank Louis Pius and Nicole for taking their time out yesterday and being a part of that uh, event. And I also want to thank Reverend Alexis Anderson, our member down in Baton Rouge, who hooked us up with that because it was her phone call that got us started. Because quite frankly, we were going to host the event here and we could have hosted the event here. Um, so two things. One, it reminded me of the importance of partnership. You know, we, we, we need partners because they have stuff that we don't. And so that partnership is good. But it also re reminded me, Brother Smith, we need some space. We, we need some space. Now, I'm not praying these people move out. I'm not praying, I'm not praying that against them. I, I love them. I just need to land because <laughs> because we, we, we got we got to get some space. We got to get some space. So let's continue to pray for that. Um, also want to thank Brother Wade and Sister Treshawn for uh, leading service last week and Bible study um, while I was gone. I will tell you all, I had an amazing trip. God is so good. American Airlines, maybe not so much, but God is good. <laughs> God is good. Um, we, we serve an on time God, but I was riding an on late airline. I, I, let me just let me just tell you about that part. Um, but uh, it was an amazing trip and the blessing that I got. And um, and I also want to um, specifically thank Sister Lindsay uh, last week, because uh, one of the things that we don't do enough of is think. And as she talked last week, people were like, uh, yeah, because we, we need to think we, we are a thinking people. We are a thinking people, and, that, and that, that's what we need to do, engage our minds so that we can operate in this world. So thank you for that as well. Uh, next slide. Uh, oh, let's see. Oh, I forgot. Ooh. Um, so th this was slide was up last week, and I meant to do it. Uh, Brashawn White is our resident soccer hero, and he plays for Yuri Middle, Julia Jive Middle School, and they made the playoffs, the soccer playoffs, and so we want to celebrate them, and we got basketball stars. We got soccer stars. We, we just, we, yeah, track stars. We just all, all old academic stars. Uh, uh, a, B, on a roll students. We, hey, and we want to celebrate all that. But not only do we want to celebrate that, next slide. We want to celebrate um, Sister Ebony Henderson. Y'all used to know her at Jackson, but she's Henderson now. Uh, but she did a crafts exhibition um, last week. She's trying to get out there. She was very nervous about showing people her stuff, which I understand because my first book sat on my computer for a year and a half before I let anybody else read it. And so she stepped out and had a tremendous exhibition last week and she's having a pop-up shop in May. And so we definitely want to celebrate her for allowing her gifts to be used and to go out into the world and doing that. And so we, we applaud her as well. Yeah. Next slide. Happy birthday. Jeff Lowe, it might be April Fool's Day, but no, oh, it's April Jeff Day. That's, that, that's a, so Jeff, Jeff's birthday was on the first, and um, some woman's birthday is today. Um, oh, gosh. Happy birthday, Elizabeth. <laughs> 29 and a half. Okay. 29. <laughs> Her mama said that's what she claims. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you see the birthdays, Sister Sonia Coleman, Sister Marie Woodbury, Brother Wade Flood, Brother Thomas Smith, uh, my mama, and then uh, Robert Jackson Jr. all have birthdays. Any April birthdays that I missed? Let me go ahead and just ask that now. Anybody? Amen. 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 Anybody, anybody else? We'll, we'll check out. Check through the week when people yell at me because I ain't get their birthday. But for those, and uh, let me just go ahead and remind you guys again, you're here on purpose. It's not an accident. You made it to your birthday in 2022. It, 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 is, it, it is a purpose 
for a purpose. And God's got something amazing he wants you to do. And that's why you're still here. And so I encourage you and uh, to continue to live out that purpose that God has for you. Next slide. Any anniversaries in April? I did not have any. Nobody sent me any anniversaries. Nobody got married in April. April. Okay. All right. All right. We'll take that. All right. All right. Next slide. Let's see. Uh, I want to encourage you guys to give. Um, me and Sean and um, Brother Smith met with a guy yesterday talking about our sign. Um, we need y'all to give um, so that we can uh, do what we want to do. Um, but I do want to thank you in advance because you have blessed us so much that we have options. And, could, and, and so, but want to encourage you to continue your worship through giving um, your faithfulness. I, I did, I got to announce, I got to celebrate that last week as somebody else was talking about how they've, they've got to really kickstart their church and get them to give again. And I've been, I was like, because I don't know nothing about that. And so for those who are present, um, you can get out your devices and you can give that way. We do have the box that you can um, drop your gift off. We still have the PO box, so whatever way you want. Um, I do want to thank our young people. Um, every once in a while, I get a phone call, Pastor, how can I give? And that gets me excited right there. And then the fact that I can tell you, hey, you can give Cash App or Zelle gets me excited too And when they follow through. So we thank you for your continued giving. And not only your giving of your tithes and offerings, but next slide. Um, we want to also thank you for your giving to Debt Free in 23. Um, we will be making a report here at the end of the month of the giving that has been done for that. And um, I do appreciate St. Mary's leading the way in helping um, the 8th Episcopal District become debt free. And so we ask that you will continue to give uh, to support this local church and the, the larger church that we are a part of. Next slide. Uh, Bible study, Bible study. So there will not be a women's book club this evening because y'all got some reading to do. Well, I mean, Jackie's probably already done, but um, some of the rest of you have some reading to do. Um, and, uh, but men's Bible study. All right, brothers, we will be uh, here tomorrow night um, and online on Zoom. Um, we are in Deuteronomy chapter five. Um, we got stuck last Monday on um, Sabbath and taking a rest. I don't know why we got stuck there, but we got stuck there. So we're going to try to see if we can push past um, that in Deuteronomy 5. And then on Wednesday night, so we're going to leave the Psalms on Wednesday night. We're leaving the Psalms on Wednesday night, and we are going to go to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. So between now and Easter Sunday, um, well, probably, probably for the, maybe for the rest of the month, but we'll see how far we get. Because as we've been going wild, the first part of wild was worshiping God. The second part of wild is interacting with people. And some of us really need to, we're going to spend this quarter in Bible study, learning how to interact with people. And the best person to learn that from is Jesus. And so we're going to look at Jesus in John chapter 13. That's where we're going to start. So John chapter 13, verse one, and then we're going to move on from there and see how Jesus interacted with those he loved and those who didn't quite love him. And we'll go from there. Next slide. For the um, women's uh, book club, the book is Southern Storm. Uh, yes, Jackie, that's the book everybody else is reading. I know you are way past. This is book two in the series. You're way past that. So for everybody else, book two is the next book. Um, and uh, so next Sunday night, uh, they will be uh, looking at uh, talking about Southern Storm and blowing up everybody's phone in between now and then as other people aren't reading. But that's a whole other issue. Next slide. Um, schedule for the month. The big thing I want to bring out, um, everybody should have got the calendar. If you did not get the calendar, let me know. But starting today, we're going back to Southern Oaks. So before COVID, <laughs> thank you, Mara. Uh, before COVID, every first and third Sunday, we would have a service at Southern Oaks. And then once COVID hit, they shut it down. Well, we're going back today. And so what I would ask is that you would pray for me because preaching twice in one day is no fun. I don't know how those other, those big preachers do it. But well, it is fun, but it's challenging. But the other thing I want to say is pray for the people, because it's been a long time since they've had in-person worship. And so we want to be a blessing to them. And so we pray the Spirit of the Lord will fall on them where they are at, and we can make a difference in their lives. Okay, next slide. Um, the next few slides are just things that are going on this week, uh, I mean, this month. Good Friday service. Every year we have a big Good, Good Friday service. The last few years it's been entirely virtual. This year we're going to host it here. 
and we're going to invite the district here and then they'll also be online on zoom and facebook so we encourage you on uh, good friday april 15th that you would come out and be a part one way or another and then next slide then on saturday is charlotte anything going on on the saturday before easter <laughs> you're like oh yeah but we are going to have a great time we, we we we've reserved a game truck we we've got a concert by Jomaine Battles and Redemption. We we've got uh, Easter egg hunt. We've got food. Uh, the brothers are getting together, and we're gonna get at least two bikes. I'm looking at four now. I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to challenge us. Yeah, see, Brother Smith said okay. So we're gonna we're gonna get four bikes. Charles, we are promising you four bikes to give away. All right, and so we are gonna do this. We are inviting the community, and we're gonna get people out. Um, we have ordered up a beautiful day, and uh, God is going to bless. Uh, in an overwhelming way. And then on Sunday, next slide, we will start the day at 6.30 in the morning because we will have our Easter sunrise service. The last couple of mornings I've stood out on my, last couple of Easter Sundays, I've stood out on my front porch and I've done this. This year I'm standing out here and I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna do it. So you're welcome to stay at home if you get up, but I'm gonna be here because I'm gonna bring in Easter Sunday the way that I love to bring in Easter Sunday. And so we will have our regular worship Sunday, I mean, uh, sunrise service, Sunday school, regular worship service. And then actually, then we'll be at Southern Oaks too. So yeah, keep praying. That's going to be a long day, ma'am. Pray for us. Oh yeah. Breakfast will be served for those that are here. We ain't delivering breakfast. This ain't DoorDash. So you got to show up here if you want to get breakfast. And uh, so we'll go that. And I think that is the last slide that we have. Um, Lewis, take that slide down. If you look, there's another slide in there that I was, I, I, I need you, if you can bring that up, because I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to stay out of trouble with certain people, because I did make a slide, and as soon as he, he'll get rid of this, yeah, close this one down, and then bring up the other one. He's getting there. I threw this one, okay, good, all right, and now, yeah, and see if you can bring, bring up that other one there. because I threw this one at him at the last minute. There you go. All right. Um, Sister Payne, from the members of St. Mary, thank you for taking your time to share your talent and to show how much you treasure all of us for the gifts and the treats that you have provided over the last two years. We are grateful for that. Um, so, uh, somebody's looking at, somebody's looking at, see, I know some of y'all, cause I know y'all, some of y'all looking at that list like, I don't remember that. I ain't get. wait a minute. I, <laughs> I didn't get nothing. Uh, for those who are here in person, uh, and they did not, did not get it yesterday. There is some cheesecake here. So there's a cheese. Yes, ma'am. There's a cheese. So you can stop looking at me like that. For those who are who did not get it delivered yesterday, there is some cheesecake here for you. So that, that you all stop looking at me all mean. Um, I don't know why everybody look at me mean. We thanking her, but they looking at me. Why is that, Talisha? <laughs> so, um, but no, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> then you received your blessing. For those who ate theirs already, you received your blessing. <laughs> <laughs> but now seriously um you know and um i will say this um because the original plan was we just wanted to make sure everybody got communion and my wife was like well we got to give them something else i was like no we don't the bread of christ is enough it's enough and she said well yes it is for their spirit but let's get something for their body and uh so uh she she decided to do that and y'all wouldn't believe how she struggles every month trying to figure out what she will deliver now i haven't heard anybody else complain but she just she she wants to so, so she does love you guys and i love going to the store for you guys so that i can make sure that she's got everything that she needs so thank you sister Payne. okay now we can take that down am i are we good Okay, good. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, Minister Bryant, if you would please help us to get ready for the preaching moments. Bye. 
Christ. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a hand of praise. Jesus, she stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger. Some folks whispered, "There's no place here for."
like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Woo! So don't be angry if I wash my his feet with my tears and I dry them with my
There is so much that the Lord has done for me. our worship leader, uh, Mother Juanita Williams. To Sister Priscilla Slater. 
Sister Doretha Green. To Sister Annette Price and Sister Patricia Cotton in the building. And then to Sister Mary Dorsey at home. Sister Vera Tucker at home. To these women who have led us and prayed us through so much. To my stewardesses here who would faithfully serve through pandemic and it was made faithful to their charge to minister Reginald Bryan who has been consistent throughout it all amen to the stewards and trustees of this church especially to my stewards who continually go and uh, try to do their best to take care of their pastor even when he won't let them and to each one of you my brothers and sisters in christ i greet you with the excitement that is surrounding being in the world at this time in history there is so much going on and similar to the man born blind, the disciples asked, was it the man who sinned in his mother's womb or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus said to them, neither he sinned nor his parents. But this happened for the glory of God. So when we're wondering why gas prices are $2 higher than they were, when we're wondering why we are still trying to figure out how many vaccine shots we got to take, when we're trying to figure out what we're doing about setting the time forward or back, when we're trying to figure out all of this stuff, I need us to be focused that this is happening for the glory of God. And with that, we want to read his word this morning. Um, thank you, uh, Sister Battles, for your prayer. And thank you, birthday girl, for reading the scripture. She read Revelation chapter 5, the entire chapter. She read it out of the King James. I would like to follow that up by reading it out of the Christian Standard Bible. Um, Revelation chapter 5. This is the Apostle John talking. He says, then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne, a scroll with writing on both sides, sealed with seven seals. I also saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or even to look in it. Then one of the elders, wait, actually, I'm sorry. I wept and wept because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or even look in it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has conquered so that he is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw one like a slaughtered lamb standing in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent into all the earth. He went and he took the scroll out of the hand of the one seated on the throne when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and golden bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slaughtered and you purchased people. For God, by your blood from every tribe and language and people and nation, you made them a kingdom and priest to our God, and they will reign on the earth. 
Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and also of the four living creatures and of the elders. Their number was countless thousands plus thousands of thousands. They said with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven on earth under the earth, on the sea, and everything in them say blessing and honor and glory and power be to the one seated on the throne, to the Lamb forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Using these scriptures as a base, I want to preach to you from the topic, the Lamb is the goat. The Lamb is the goat. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you. Thank you for the Bryant family being able to sing. Thank you for those who were able to walk in this building under their own power. Thank you for the electricity and the technology for those who are on Facebook and on Zoom. Thank you for your presence in every place. And Lord, we're going to thank you in advance for the power of this preached word. Not because I've read, not because I've prepared, but because it's your word. Speak, Lord. Speak to me and through me. Use me as your megaphone that everyone under the sound of my voice might be changed through your word. Lord, we need you. We, we, we need a word. From, heck, Lord, we need a paragraph. So speak loudly and clearly directly into our situations. And once again, I ask you that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 Many of us um, who are sports fans have a regular conversation about who the goat is. Now, I, I'm not talking about a wild animal with horns that makes a lot of noise and eats everything around. I'm talking about the goat as in the greatest of all time. If you're talking football right now, everybody says Tom Brady is the goat. Super Bowl championships on multiple teams. He's got to be the greatest. But maybe the bigger argument isn't about the NFL, but it's in the NBA. There is a group of young people, that's who I'm blaming it on, that will tell you, Larry, that LeBron James is the GOAT. He's the greatest basketball player of all time. He even said so. He said, I'm the GOAT. Now, I hate to argue with a brother that is 6'7", 250. Or the rest of those who believe such foolishness. But there is no question. Stevie Wonder can see that Michael Jordan is the goats more championships change the game and we will argue back and forth about who the goat and who is the greatest because the big problem is we have no way of proving it so it just becomes an argument and it's a popular argument But as we were preparing, as I was preparing this message, and I, I was thinking about all of the great people in the world. All of the wonderful people and all the great differences that they make. And as we get closer to Easter, I was like, well, wait, I got it that we're talking about. We don't put the qualify the greatest basketball player of all time. The greatest football player of all time. We just say the greatest of all time. I said, well, wait a minute. There's got to be one greater than that. Because in the scene we see in heaven, John is giving us this vision that he's in heaven and they're looking and they, by bottom line, they say, who is great enough to open the scroll? 
And they looked at Tom Brady and he was like, oh, not me. LeBron and Michael were standing there side by side and they pointed at each other. They said, oh, it ain't me. I'm not great enough to do it. And in the midst of the conversation, John started crying. There's nobody. And he says he wept and he wept. And one of the angels said, don't cry. Dry your eye. Because the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he is worthy. And then... As you would imagine, and in my mind, as I try to picture it, as John turns, I'm expecting you to see this huge, majestic lion standing there talking about, I got this. But the Bible says John turns around and he sees a lamb. Now, our resident veterinarian, Trinity, helped us understand the lambs are nothing to be celebrated. They're not very smart. They're not very strong. There's not a lot going for a lamb. But when he, at one minute, he was the lion of the tribe of Judah. But when John turned around, and not just any lamb, but a lamb that looked like he'd been slaughtered. I got to believe John looked for a moment and he said, um, you sure? But the Bible says the lamb walked over to the throne and he took the scroll out of the right hand, the hand of strength, the hand of power. He, he took the scroll out of the hand of the one seated on the throne. And at that point, all heaven said, you the goat. That, 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 that lamb right there, he's the goat. He's worthy because of what he's been through. And I need to make sure that we as St. Mary Amy Church, we as whoever's watching this, we understand this just ain't no ordinary lamb. This lamb is the goat. Now, you know me because I, I love a word. And, and, and while greatest of all times is good, uh, I, I need you to see some understanding of what that goat really means to us. And when you look at it, these scriptures and other scriptures in the Bible tell us that the lamb is not the goat, just the greatest of all time, but the lamb is the God overseeing all things. He is very God. As a matter of fact, I need, I need to read it to you from Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. It says, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for everything was created by him in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authority, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things. And by him, all things hold together. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile everything to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. John would add in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made through him and without him was nothing made. See, why am I making this point? Because we are getting close to Easter. And at this time, uh, AMC and National Geographic Channel and all of these people are going to tell you who the real Jesus is. And they're going to talk about a man who, who lived in Galilee if they believe he lived at all. 
and then maybe he, he might have died or he didn't die. He married Mary Magdalene and he moved on and he had a nice life and a couple of kids. They're going to tell you about the real Jesus. But I need to let you know that the book of Revelation, which is called the revealing, where Jesus was revealed for who he really is, and Jesus is God. Jesus is the one that holds everything together. Jesus is the one who made it. And why did he make it? Because he made it for himself. And we need to recognize, yes, I have a t-shirt at home. It says, Jesus is my homeboy. And, and I, I, I love the shirt because we have that kind of friend relationship. But I also have to recognize that he is God of very God. Everything that is in God is in Jesus. He told Philip, he said, if you've seen me, You've seen the father. When he stood before the Pharisees, he said, before Abraham was, not I was, not I will be, not I could have been. He said, I am. And so for all those people who say, Jesus never believed he was God. Which Bible are you reading? Because no human being, no angel ever accepted worship. But when they bowed at Jesus' feet, when she broke the alabaster box, Jesus didn't say, ooh, baby, no, only worship God. He said, yeah, that's right, because I am. And we have forgotten that he is. We have forgotten because we just think Jesus is just some dude hanging out with us, but he is God. And he is not some God that just walked away and literally, he's the God who controls everything. When you think it's all out of control, nothing's happening. Hey, actually, Lindsay, when you talked about the Illuminati last week, I said, yeah, you know, people are doing stuff. But then I said, wait a minute. They're only doing what God allows them to do because Jesus is still in control. He might not do what you want him to do, and that's probably a good thing because you don't even know. We wake up, spend 30 minutes looking at a menu trying to figure out what we're going to eat, and somehow we're going to run the universe. We need Jesus because he's the God who oversees all things. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is the end all, be all, and that's why he is worthy of our worship that's why we can celebrate him because he is the one the lamb is the goat but not only is he the god who oversees all things and this is the one i need some of y'all to really understand the lamb is also the guilt offering absolving trespasses i'm going to teach you for a moment in the Old Testament, we see all of the different offerings that were given, all kinds of offering, all kinds of blood being shed. And the Bible says that Jesus satisfied that. But there's one particular. On the Day of Atonement, on Yom Kippur, they would bring in two goats, and they would select one goat, and they would slaughter the goat, and his blood would be sprinkled on the mercy seat to pay for the sins of the nation. But on the second goat, the priest would confess the sins of the people. Pat Cotton did this. Linda Payne did this and this and this. And Pastor Payne did more than that. And he would confess all of the sins on the goat, but they wouldn't kill the goat. Somebody would take the goat and they would take the goat out into the wilderness. While the first goat paid for the sins, the second goat took away the guilt. See, many of us, we know the first goat. We come and we celebrate the first goat. The first goat, oh, my sins is paid for. Woo, yes, God, woo. But we forgot about the second goat. Jesus is not just the first goat. Yes, he paid for our sins, but he also removed the guilt. What is the guilt definition? Guilt, a feeling of responsibility or remorse for some offense. 
And even in the dictionary, it says, whether real or imagined. Yes, you were guilty. You did it. Yes, Karen, you did it. But when Jesus died, he paid for it, and then he took the guilt. Why are you still hunting for the guilt? The Bible says it's separated as far as the east is from the west. And some of us are walking through life trying to find the guilt. I can't do that. I can't preach. I can't sing. I can't start a business. I can't raise kids. Why? Because of what I did. And Jesus is like, but I could have, I could have swore I took that. Well, yeah, Jesus, but you, you know, you remember, you remember what I did April 9th, 2004, and Jesus is like, um, April, uh, no, no, Jesus, you remember, I was there with them, and we did, no, I don't remember, you know why, because the Bible says, he put it in the sea of forgetfulness, if someone is bringing up your sin, it's not Jesus. It's not God. God is not standing behind you going, Liz, now you know what you did. That's not God. But it was a still small voice. It was a lying voice. And too many of us are walking around with a lying voice and we are not doing what God made us to do. Because we forgot that Jesus is the goat. The word absolve. It means to free from guilt or blame or their consequences, to set free or release. That's what he's done. He's absolved your trespasses. He says, what's, wait, 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 I think it's still in there. Maybe. If the sun sets you free, you're still bound because you got to pay for the debt yourself. No, that's the, that's, that, that's the old nasty version. That, that's the religious version. But the Bible version says, if the Son sets you free, you are free. Indeed. Indeed is not just a website where you get a job. Indeed is the guarantee that what he says is true. We all know you did it, but Jesus said, I don't care because I removed it. I am the guilt offering. I took your guilt and I took it as far as I could. So stop living like you're guilty. I don't know if any of you know anyone who's uh, had, a, had, a, had a, a part of their body amputated. But sometimes they have this uh, phantom. They have this phantom feeling like the leg is still there. The, the leg is gone, and, but it feels so real. It's not there. And they feel the pain and they feel all of this stuff, even though it's not there. And I had one writer and I found this last night and he said, he said to me, phantom limb pain provides a wonderful insight into the phenomenon of false guilt. Christians can be obsessed by the memory of some sin committed years ago. It never leaves them crippling their ministry, their devotional life and their relationships with others. They live in fear that someone will discover their past. They work overtime to prove to God that they are truly repentant. They erect barriers against envelop the enveloping, loving grace of God. Someone said, if you can't say amen, you say ouch. Because God knows some of us are still living in the guilt. But you know why we're living with the guilt? Because we forgot the lamb is the goat. We forgot the lamb didn't just pay for the sins. He took the guilt away. And some of us have been living our lives trying to, where's that goat? Where'd that goat go? Find that goat. That goat's got my guilt. He's got my guilt. You can't make a difference in Shreveport. You can't make a difference in Florida. You can't make a difference in Tennessee because you're so busy looking for the guilt. And then when somebody brings it up, you say, oh, there it is. You write... God can't use me. What if Paul was slave to the guilt? We wouldn't have two-thirds of the Bible, two-thirds of the New Testament. What if Moses was slave to the guilt? What 
what if Peter was slave to the guilt? And we look at them, oh, yes, but they were such great, they used, but they were great sinners too. And so my question is, somebody is asking, what if Greg Welch stays slave to the guilt? Well, what if Wade Flood stays slave to the guilt? Then things will not happen. But the lamb is the goat. But there's one more. You knew there was one more. There was, there's, there's one more. Not only is he the, not only is he the um, God overseeing all things, not only is he the guilt offering, absolving trespasses, but I need you to think for a second. Somebody tell me what's the best gift. Just think about it for a second. What's the best gift you ever got? It's the best gift. Somebody got a new car. Yeah, I, I honestly, it's my car. Ooh, and she keeps running into things. Um, but see, the point, the point is everyone has got a great gift. But that gift got old because then there was a new great gift. Because the same great gift when you were six, that greatest gift you got when you were six, ain't the same great. If I gave you that gift now, why you give me that? Well, you liked it when you were six. See, those great gifts get old. Those great gifts, they rust. We change. But I need to let you know that the lamb is the gift that outclasses all treasures. You know the song? And maybe we should sing it more than at Christmas. Uh, silver and gold. Silver and gold, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. No fame or fortune, no riches untold. Oh, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Don't give me a mansion on top of a hill. Don't give me the world with a shallow thrill, but just give me a savior. My life he can hold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Is that just a song or is that a truth? Because all the stuff that we're looking for in life, all the stuff that we want, we think money. We can, well, more money, more problems. Why are you spending so much time trying to get more money? Because we think the money can solve our problems. The money will make me complete. The money will give me what I want. But it can't do it. I tell you all the time, isn't it amazing that we don't see a bunch of homeless people killing themselves? There's not a bunch of homeless, broke people under a bridge killing themselves. What I hear is movie stars, R&B artists, the rich and the famous are killing them. But wait, they got it all. No, they don't. They got a lot of stuff, but they don't have the goats. They don't have the gifts. Hallmark used to say when you care, to care enough to send the very best. God cared enough to send the very best. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. The gift that we need. I found this verse, it's Colossians 2 and verse 10. I let me read 9 first. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, in him being Jesus. And you are complete in him. You're not complete in your new car. You're not complete in your new job. You're not incomplete with your new boo. Your boo does not make you complete. The only thing that can make you complete is the goat, the gift that outclasses all treasures. And when you have relationship with him, you will know the completeness that you are looking for. He is the one who brought us back into relationship with God. He is the one who said, apart from me, you can do nothing. You want the one who is able to take you to where he has planned for you. I, I know the money is nice. The car is nice. The house is nice. But, but the house is going to break down. The car is going to get old. But Jesus, he is the same yesterday, today and forever. The same Jesus that took five, two small fish and five hamburger buns, that same Jesus fed 5,000, that same Jesus could feed us. The same Jesus that walked on water is the same Jesus who can walk on our situation. The same Jesus that spoke to wind and wave is the same Jesus that has been given to us that says, peace, be still. That's the gift. 
There's nothing worse. Well, we say there's nothing worse than an ingredient. There's something about having a gift that's never been opened. You ever given somebody something and you call them two weeks later, hey, hadn't heard, do you like what I got you? Oh, where did I put that? I, I, I don't even know where. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me get back to you. God gave us Jesus. And we're running around. I need this. And I need that. And I don't know. And God says, hey, did you open my gift? Did, did, did you open the gift that I gave you? Well, no, God, I got to find some peace. Well, the gift I gave you is the prince of peace. I, 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 God, I, I need some wisdom. I need some direction. Oh, wait, wait. The gift I gave you is my wisdom. The, the gift I gave you will order your steps. Oh, yeah. God, I need love. I'm so lonely. Oh, the gift I gave you will never leave you. No, the gift I gave you loves you so much that he died for you. I don't know what you want for Christmas. I don't want you for your birthday. I don't know what you want, but I know what you need. You need the goat. You need a gift. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of the other stuff will be added unto you. I challenge you. I dare you that you need the goat. Someone said if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. And so God sent us a savior. I don't know what you're looking for, but you need to find the goat. I need to tell you, um, I, I got to be honest with you because just uh, my preaching style and what I like to do. Um, I really wanted to preach this, this message at Easter. Mr. Brian, I, I wanted to save it because I wanted the big, the big crowd. I, I wanted to get the big crowd. So, oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good, Brother Morgan. This is going to be good. I want this for Easter. And God was like, every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection. And I didn't promise you that you'd be here. So you might want to go ahead and preach it now because we need to know that the lamb is the goat. The lamb is the God who oversees all things. The lamb is the guilt offering that absolves trespasses. The lamb is the gift that outclasses all treasures. You, you, you got the goat? Do, 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 you, do you have the goat? I'm, I'm going to finish with the story. Linda, you remember we went to my grandparents' house one year for Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, Paris, Tennessee. And um, so we're out there, and all of a sudden I hear this in the backyard. Uh, uh, I was like, what is that? And I go in the backyard, and there's this big old goat in the backyard. And I'm looking at him like, oh, he's so cute. And I was like, well, what, what, Grandpa, why you got a goat back here? Grandpa said, uh, we have enough for Thanksgiving. I was like, goat? I, I'm looking at my parents going, what kind of house have you brought me to? Who has goats for Thanksgiving? But Reg, I got to tell you, I don't know what my grandfather did to that goat. That goat was good. That, that, that goat was good. I, I, I wouldn't have tried that goat. But when I got a taste of the goat, the goat was good. Somewhere in the book, it says, taste and see. That the Lord is good. I know you don't like the sound of a goat. You don't like the look of a goat. But you need to know that the lamb is the goat. And 
if you will taste and see, you will know that the Lord is good. If you will taste and see, you will see that he is the God over all things. If you will taste and see, you will know your trespasses have been absolved. If you will taste and see, you will know that he is the gift that outclasses all treasures. Try him. Just get a little taste. Get a little taste, and it'll change your life. Get a little taste, and your world will be different. Get a little taste. Because the lamb is the goat. Amen. It sounds good. We get excited, stand up and, and clap. But I got to ask you, what difference will it make tomorrow? Heck, what difference will it make this afternoon? Will we live like we know this is true? When CNN comes on and MSNBC and tells us the world is out of control. Like, no, 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 because the lamb is still the goat. When someone from your past comes and says, Annette, you remember what you did? You're like, um, no. Because the lamb is the goat. When you're looking around your life going, I don't have what I need. Well, wait, I have everything that I need because the lamb is the goat. So like my grandparents on that Thanksgiving, do you have the goat? Or are you just sitting around going, that's dumb. I'm going to stay with the turkey. Somebody said you are what you eat. And Jesus said, unless you eat of my body and you drink my blood you have no part in me you need Jesus no no never mind I know you need Jesus are you ready to confess that you need Jesus that he is Lord that you believe that God raised him from the dead so that you may be saved. If you're not sure, if, well, I don't know. Well, I don't want these people to look at me. Look, I've told y'all before, when we get to heaven and we see you're not there, we'll know something. So it's be better to clean it up now than wait. Till then. Well, I'm going to wait till Easter. Hey, the message couldn't wait till Easter. You probably shouldn't try to wait till Easter either. And so if you need to know that you know that you know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, I invite you to come forward. I invite you that are online to reach out via Zoom or via Facebook so that you can go into this Easter season not just celebrating rabbits and eggs and free bicycles, but that you can go into the season knowing that I'm related to the goats. Is there one? Is there one here that needs Jesus? Is there one here that needs a church home? Is there one that needs prayer? I invite you, if there's one. Is there another?
Let's pray. Jesus, we need you. Each person here has an issue. That yes, we could go to doctors. We, we could go to lawyers. We could go to friends and parents and other advisors. But we're starting with the goat. We're starting with the one who can speak into our situations because you are the one who knows all about it. And Lord, as we go through these trying times, the transitions that we are facing, Lord God, we feel like we are in the valley of the shadow of death. But Lord, the psalmist said, though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. God, be with these who have come in the midst of their situation and circumstance, Lord, be closer to them than their own skin. Regulate their minds, Lord God, so that they would not focus on all of the evils that are around them, but they will see your plan and purpose. Regulate their emotions, God, so they don't get caught up in their feelings, but that they will walk by faith and not by sight. Lord God, clear a path for them. And where the path is blocked, give them the strength to step over it. But keep them focused, God, on you and your purpose. In their physical bodies, God, bring healing. Because you are Jehovah Rapha. In their lack bring provision because you are Jehovah Jireh. In the battle that they are about to fight, be the banner because you are Jehovah Nisi. You are the one who always brings victory. And through it all, God, be Jehovah Shalom. Be their peace that passes all understanding. In this time in their existence, God, let them have such a profound sense of your presence that they know that with every step they take, every move they make, every breath, you are there and you will not leave them. That you are going to carry them through to the promised land, the thing that you have prepared them for, that victory is there oh it might not look like it now but you have a plan for them a plan to prosper them and not to harm them a plan to give them a hope and a future help them to embrace the plan as they embrace you deep in their relationship god and walk with them every step of the way let them like Jesus coming in to Jerusalem. A triumphal entry even before the battle has started. Let them leave this altar knowing that victory is theirs. Let them leave this altar knowing that the battle is not theirs, but it's yours. Let them leave this altar knowing that you've got everything under control help their unbelief guide them and use them that you might be glorified in all things it's in the name of the goats that we pray amen and amen god bless you
for those that are present. I invite you to get your communion out. I want to um, if you don't have if you have if you don't have communion please raise your hand and make sure the ushers get it to you if you're going to join us in this sacrament one of the things that I want to remind everybody um, that this is not just a opportunity to renew our relationship and reconfirm our relationship with God it's also an opportunity to reconfirm our relationship with one another. Because I need you to know one thing that's very, very important. You are not alone. Oh, but Pastor, I feel alone. I, 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 I'm not arguing how you feel. I'm talking about the fact. The fact is you have a family around you that is ready to help. And when we celebrate communion, part of what we do, it, it, it says that you intend to lead a new life in love and charity with your neighbor. We are saying that part of this means, I, we even say it, it, it when we did the, uh, when we did the uh, uh, call to worship, because of the house of the Lord, I will seek your good. Because we are a part of the same family. I live, I exist, I am here for you, not because I'm the pastor, but because I'm your brother in Christ. And so as we share this, I want, yes, oh, the lamb is the goat, and we're going to celebrate the goat because this is the symbolic blood and body of the goat. But remember in heaven, it said that there were thousands upon thousands. It's talking about tribes and nations and tongues that were all there together celebrating the goat. We're family, y'all. Let's start acting like a good one. Because some of all go, well, I got family, but I don't like them. Well, I, hey, I, I ain't talking about it. I'll preach that in a couple of weeks. But today, we're going to be the kind of family that God wants us to be. And we start that by sharing dinner together. So, um, you that do truly and earnestly repent, of your sins you're turning away from them and are in love and charity with your neighbor mm. I don't know if that one's worse or this one and intend to lead a new life anybody tired of the old life I mean you can tell me anything but we, we, are you tired of the old life because that would say you're intending to lead a new life what? how following the commandments of God. Not the commandments of CNN, not the commandments of Fox News, not the commandments of the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. I'm an independent. No, you need to be a dependent on God. And walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling. I'm going to kneel. You do whatever you feel led to do. Um, Lewis, if you want to bring up the general confession, and we will share together in the, uh, in the general confession. It's going to be yeah, next. And next. And one more time. There you go. All right, let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. 
most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past. Grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly father, who of your tender mercy did give your only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, made there by his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel, Command us to continual a perpetual memory of that, his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly ask you and grant that we receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it. For this is my blood of New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. We did it. We lied, we cheated, we stole. We did so many things wrong. But he demonstrated his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, he let them spit on him. He let them whip him. They, he let them hang him on a cross. Because of what it is, his broken body that we feast on right now. Remember that you are loved so much. Now feast on his broken body, knowing that it was broken for you. We talked about it. The first goat was slaughtered, and his blood was sprinkled <laughs> not on the judgment seat but on the mercy seat. This blood is mercy. This blood is grace. This blood is forgiveness. And so I invite you to shed this blood on the altar of your heart as you drink it, knowing that his blood has washed away your sin, past, present, and future. You may drink.
Family, let us now share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, desire your fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly asking you to grant that by the merits and death of your son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto you, humbly asking you that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father, Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace. Goodwill towards men. We praise you. We bless you. We glorify you. We give thanks unto you for your great glory, O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sins of the whole world. Have mercy upon us. You who take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You who sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For you alone are holy. You alone are the Lord. You alone, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, are most high in the glory of God the Father. And in all God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Um, as we prepare to close, um, it is so good to see this corner right here. I, 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 I'm not going to lie. I, I, I love this corner, too. I love this corner, too. But there's something about this corner right here. Sister Slater, it's so good to see you. Uh, Mother Williams, Sister Green, it's, it's so good. The stewardesses, thank you. I cannot thank you guys enough for your presence and all that you guys have done. And to the Bryan family, now I know why, again, I say this is why we can't sing. This is why the Payne family can't sing, because they got in line. They, they cut in front of us. We were, we were next. We were next. And all of a sudden, all these Bryants came cutting in. So we, we won't hate you too long for that. But thank you. Um, and to all of you, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I am excited if you hadn't guessed. And guess what? This is only the third day of the month. <laughs> it's only going to get better from here. And so um, with that, let's pray. Eternal God, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to celebrate the communion. Thank you for all these people that have gathered in person and online. Thank you for your presence in the building and throughout the world. Now, Lord, remind us of who Jesus really is so that we might walk in that truth that we might walk upright, knowing that he is the God who oversees all things, knowing that he is the guilt offering that absolves trespasses, knowing that he is the gift that outclasses all treasures. Lord God, let us walk in that truth. Now, Unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. To the only wise God be dominion, honor, glory, and power now and forevermore. And all those that know that the lamb is the goat said, amen. Amen. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. If you did not get your gift yesterday, please come and see me in the back, okay? That's first. Second of all, 
Um, this week has been really interesting. I don't know. We've had a lot to do. We've been extremely busy, but almost everywhere we went, I just want you to know how interesting it was. So I had uh, a back ablation where they burned the nerves in my back. And uh, so I was getting out and this man walked up to the truck really fast. And he said, the door is still locked. So just relax a minute and don't get out. And I was like, oh, okay. And he said, hey, I know that man. And he's pointing at Bob. I was like, okay. I don't know how you know him, but okay. He's like, he's famous. He's on TV. And I was like, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Bob's like, oh gosh, oh gosh. He said, I saw him on a, on a real estate commercial. So then we ran into somebody else and he's like, hey, I know you. You were on that air conditioning commercial. So everywhere we've gone, and then yesterday we had on our shirts and people just multiple, people, we went to the BX, which was the, the funniest place. Cause I tell you, I had like four people in the BX say, I'm trying to read your shirt. Can you stop? So I could read the back. And they were like, that is the coolest shirt. So y'all wear the shirts. And most importantly, our new cards. Everybody should have got one with their cheesecake. If not, come see me in the back with the, doesn't mean you're getting another cheesecake, but, <laughs> but you can get some cards. This is about going wild, people. This is, Bob hates the picture on it. I don't care. He is super hot on this picture. Woo, he fine. But, but that's beside the point. Don't invite Q, ladies. No, not really. Uh, this is a passport to invite somebody. Because we are going places this year. We are going wild. You don't even have to. I pass these out all day. I said, like, where's your church? Where's your church? Here you go. 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 This is your way of inviting somebody. So please come. And I don't want you to take a handful. And take them home. Put them on your, your, your counter where all your junk gathers. And you forget about them. I want you to invite people. This is the year. We are going wild. So come and spread the word. I'll see you in the back. All right, y'all go now. Remind me how to mute her mic next time. <laughs>